so I get to go first. <laughs> I'm basically here because our partners saved my job. <laughs> I was the person selected to follow John McKay. I was an anonymous guy. And I started out my first game. Some of you seniors remember Missouri just kicked the hell out of us. <laughs> Headline in the LA Times the next morning was, how could one man ruin a great program so fast? <laughs> and all the next week, things were very tense. People would stop me and say goodbye, and it was not good. <laughs> On the Thursday practice, we were going off Friday to play Oregon. And you know, it was, things were tough. In the middle of practice, Art brings the band, and they hadn't done this previous to this, and brings the band through the gates, stops our practice, marches right out in the middle of our practice, and starts playing. And I'm saying, oh God, this looks bad. You know, I, I may not even be the coach for the second game. <laughs> in the middle of that, a girl, and I, forgotten her name, I, I, maybe she's here tonight, puts down her instrument and runs over and grabs one of our players and starts dancing. And I said, oh, this is really bad. <laughs> and it was kind of spontaneous. And all the girls in the band, I'm pretty soon it was a damp dance with the stars or something. <laughs> and it really didn't look very good. And we had a lot of white guys who couldn't dance at all. And, and, but something, something happened. And it kind of released the tension and team relaxed. And we won that game. And then the next Thursday, here comes Art again. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, good Art keeper. And we win all the rest of the games. And we're going to the, and we're going to the Rose Bowl. And, for this whole damn season. <laughs> it's raining and, it, and this field was a mess. And Jack Hubbard, who was the president, was from Texas. He flew up a hundred Texans to see his team and the Rose Bowl. And they come out and it's raining and now the band takes it up a notch. They are running and sliding through the dirt. <laughs> and our football team's doing this. You know, this is seemingly for the national championship. But that relationship was so spontaneous and so good, and it started and it's never stopped. That particular uh, start to our relationship was, was just fabulous. Art was the instigator of that, and the, the, the prime mover, I think, to the tremendous relationship between the the band and the football team that has carried down through the years. Let me just make one last point. Art is up there in the lore of USC, right next to a man uh, who is Art's great friend in those early years, Marv Good. Uh, uh, Marv and Art Good. Whenever Art needed something, he would come to Marv, and Marv would be uh, 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 but he, Art always got him. And Art always loved Marv Good. And, Somewhere, Marv standing there going like that right now. Fellas. Thanks, Coach. I remember that because that tradition continued and there was, uh, there was a fight every Thursday, Friday to, to figure out who was going to get the dance with the band and the, and the song girls. So I, I remember that during my time. But I... I came to USC for one reason, and it wasn't because I remember Anthony Davis running all over Notre Dame. It wasn't from this guy coaching in all those Rose Bowl victories, and Paul McDonald was out there setting all those records, and Charlie White doing his thing. It was because in 1980, I was a ball boy. My dad was a football coach for the University of Arizona at the time. And the Arizona Wildcats, yeah, you can see yes, all <laughs> I was 14 years old. 
And my dad had went to the University of Arizona, played there, starred there, coached there. Arizona and Arizona State had just joined the Pac-10 in 1978. 1980 was the first year that USC traveled to Tucson. This guy was the head coach. USC was ranked number two in the country at the time. I remember Marcus Allen was the running back. Gordon Adams was the quarterback. I was 14. I was a Wildcat fan deep right here. Grew up there, went to football camps there. And USC came to town for the first time. It was a big hoopla sellout crowd. The team came out for warm-ups. And they were, first of all, they were the biggest team I've ever seen. <laughs> and they started to warm up, and then I started to hear noise <laughs> that I hadn't heard before. <laughs> and forgive me if I don't get this right, but I'm on the sideline, and I'm rooting for Arizona, and I hear this noise, and this noise is going... <laughs> and I see two by two, the band start coming down both sidelines of Wildcat Stadium in Arizona and Tucson. <laughs> and as soon as I thought they were going to stop, they kept coming. <laughs> and they lined up all the way down the sideline on both sides. Then they started to play. And I'm sitting there as a 14-year-old kid with my eyes wide open and my mouth going... <laughs> I didn't care what was happening on the field. All I was listening to was... <laughs> and in 1980, at 14 years old, watching that game, it was over before it started. <laughs> for my team. <laughs> because you can. It's okay. 
So I said, well, okay, we're going to have the Friday pep rally. I said, Art, these pep rallies are wonderful. You get our team ready to play, so I'm going to do the same thing. So I asked the band director to come to the pep rally. He goes, you're kidding? <laughs> so we go get a cassette player. <laughs> with the fight song, and we had a pep rally in the corner of a gym. Oh. Art, that's when I missed you the most. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys, the band, Art, you are the heartbeat of our football team. <laughs> During two days, during two days, when we're up there at the midnight and the drums are playing downstairs, it's our motivation. Yeah. You know, I've never been to a university where the fans, the Trojan family, the band, the team, the student body are one. And ladies and gentlemen, that is powerful. That is electric. That's why we win national championship. One last, one last point. The greatest moment in my life has always been about three minutes to go in the game. We have the ball and make that one more first down and everybody knows the game is over. We're at South Bend and all of a sudden you hear that. And the conquest started and everybody does that. It's the greatest feeling in all the world.